Welcome as we continue our journey through the Word of God. So glad you're joining me. Today we're going to be looking at Titus chapter 1, verse 1. Just one verse. This is a letter written by the Apostle Paul to Titus. Titus is leading the church in Crete. Paul has probably gone there after his first Roman imprisonment, set up the church. He's left Titus there in a very similar way to what he did with Timothy in Ephesus. And there's some issues going on in the church in Crete that are different than what Timothy has going on in Ephesus. So Paul writes this letter to Titus, probably most likely in between his first letter to Timothy and his second letter to Timothy. Remember, his second letter to Timothy is the last letter he ever writes, and it's a letter written to say, I'm going to die unless Jesus saves me. Uh, and so here's the urgency. So this letter is all about Titus, how to lead the church in Crete. Very applicable for us today. So let's start Titus 1, verse 1. Paul a bondservant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness. He wrote his own name first. That, that's part of the, the, the custom of writing letters of the day. And then eventually you go on to say who the reader was and then a greeting was actually given, which we'll get to later on as we go through Titus chapter 1. Now, from Titus chapter 1 verse 5, we understand that Titus and Paul have been together in, in Crete. They've established the churches there. Um, Paul's had to leave. And Paul wants to encourage Titus. So he did so with this letter. Now, one of the things that's different between the encouragement that Paul gives to Titus and that he gives to Timothy is that with Timothy, he had to constantly say during his encouragement, now be bold, Timothy. Make sure you do this, because I know that it's not your natural personality. He never says that to Titus. And so we're going to look at what that means a, a little bit later on. But what, what does that mean about you know Titus's personality? He, he obviously was somebody that didn't need to be told to be bold. So let me read to you what Adam Clark says about uh, Paul and Titus in Crete. That St. Paul had been in Crete, though nowhere else intimated, is clear from this passage that he could not have made such an important visit and evangelized an island on the first consequence without it being mentioned by his historian Luke, that's Luke from the Gospel of Luke, who was the historian of the Apostle Paul, had it happened during the period embraced in the Acts of the Apostles must be evident. That the journey, therefore, must have been performed after the time in which St. Luke ends his journey, that is, after St. Paul's first imprisonment of Rome, seems almost certain. So that's kind of where we get our timeline of when the book of Titus was written, because it was after Luke had finished writing everything about the Acts. Remember, the Acts of the Apostle, Book of Acts, written by Luke. Okay, now, Paul wrote this uh, as two other Christian workers. We're about to go to Crete. So he, he's already got Titus there, and he's got these two other people, Zenus and Apollos. Now, we read about them in Titus chapter 3. We'll find out about them later. So Paul sends this letter with them because they're going to help the work of what Titus is doing on the island of Crete. The, the letter was actually written to Titus, but it wasn't just written as a letter just for personal, for Titus to get it and then put it back and roll it up and put it in his bedside drawer. No, it was actually for all the Christians on the island of Crete. And Paul knew and wanted this letter to be read publicly amongst all the churches on the island. And so in opening the, 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 this particular letter, he has to actually talk about what his qualifications and his credentials actually are. Where did he stand on these important issues? Paul, Paul didn't think like somebody who, who was trying to give the crowd what they wanted. He wanted them to say, no, this is who I am, and I'm about to tell you a whole lot of things that you're not going to like. So I have to give you my authority. He says, I'm a bondservant of Christ. The very first thing that he says is, I'm a bondservant of Christ. Guzik says this, significantly, when Paul uses the term bondservant, he chose the ancient Greek word doulos. This word not only designated a low slave, one Greek scholar called it the most abject, servile term in use among the Greeks for a slave. It was also the word for a slave by choice. Paul was only a bondservant, yet he had a high place because he was a bondservant of God. It's never a low thing to be a servant of a great God. Amen. Now, what else is he? He's a bondservant, but he's also an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul had a very special and peculiar role to play in the uh, 
foundation and setup of the New Testament church and the church as it continues to this day. Paul had a very special function as a messenger of God. He was an apostle. Remember, Paul was taught by the risen and ascended Jesus when he went for three years to Saudi Arabia. He wasn't taught by all the other apostles and disciples in Jerusalem after Jesus had risen. So Paul's teaching, very different than everybody else. Paul had a special anointing on his life to the body of Christ. And he knew what that was, and so should you and I. You and I should know what it is that we're meant to be doing in Christ. Now, I hear a lot of people say, I just don't know what I'm meant to be doing. I don't know what my call is. And this is what I say. Wake up every day, pray, God, what do you want me to do? And then do it. Well, if you do that every day, you will live your calling. But I think a lot of Christians do nothing and they're just like, oh, I haven't heard anything yet, so I'll do nothing. But the Bible tells us all these things to do. So wake up every day and do what the Bible tells you to do and you will live in your calling. Stop making it so complicated. Stop waiting for God to write it in the sky. This is your calling. And you're like, oh, now I know. Oh, oh, and I'm going to die next week. No, let's do whatever God has called us to do each and every day. That's how you live in your calling. That's what the apostle Paul did. He didn't make it complicated. Now, he's all these things according to the faith. He wasn't an apostle because of the faith in in those people that had responded to the gospel. He was an apostle in harmony with the faith. That They had a common body of doctrine, the faith in Jesus Christ, him crucified. I am the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but by me. That was what was shared by God's elect. Now, who are God's elect? Because this term comes up a lot in the New Testament. And there is a lot of confusion on this. So I understand that what I'm going to tell you I believe is not what some other people believe. This is what I believe is consistent with Scripture. I believe that God chose every single person to be saved. Every single person. But because we have free will, the elect are those who have chosen to receive God's gift of salvation. Now, I believe he chooses everyone, but not everybody chooses him. He desires that all should be saved. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 4. God desires all should be saved. So there's no desire in God's heart that some shouldn't be saved. So some people think that the elect means that God chose before time began who was going to go to hell and who wasn't. I don't believe that. I believe that consistent with Scripture that God chose absolutely everybody. And if you respond to the call, you become part of the elect. Now, there you go. The acknowledgement of truth was something that Paul thought was very important. He, he, he said, listen, it's not just enough for you to know the faith. You have to have an acknowledgement in your life of what it actually really is. And that's why living your calling is doing what you are meant to do day by day. Otherwise, there's no acknowledgement of the truth. You've just received salvation and not, not acknowledge the truth that you need to actually go and do something with what God has given you. And what does that do? Which accords godliness. Paul said, if you, how, once you've accepted the free gift of salvation, you have to live your life in a godly way. All truth is God's truth. There's no doubt about it. But not all truth is actually relevant to godliness because godliness is about becoming more like Jesus. Uh, there's a lot of things that we can learn in life today that are true, but they actually won't impact our eternity. That's what Paul's talking about. The truth which accords with godliness. That's what we need to do. Whatever saves us from an eternity away from God, whatever tells the, the Word of God tells us, that is an acknowledgement of the truth which accords us godliness. In other words, do this, you become more like Jesus. Now, let me finish there because I want to tell you what I observe out of this first opening verse. There, there is a challenge in the book of Titus from the very first about Paul saying, this is who I am. Firstly, I'm a servant. I'm a bond servant. Do we identify like that? Do we say, you know what? My number one role in life is I'm a servant of the most high God. Whatever God asks me to do, I do. And I love that about Paul. He was like, no, you know, I have a master and his name's God. I, I have a Lord. His name's Jesus. Whatever he tells me to do, boom, I'm there. I'm doing it. And, I, and I'm an apostle. I'm his apostle. That's what I've been appointed to do. And I'm going to do it to all those people who have responded to the gospel and said yes to Jesus, to the free gift of salvation. And I'm going to do it according to the truth. And I'm going to do it in a way that is godly and points me to all the things that I'm meant to live so I can look more like Jesus. That's what I observe out of verse one. What do you observe? Put it down in the comments below. Heavenly Father, thank you for this first opening verse in the book of Titus. 
Thank you, Lord. I pray, Lord, that we would identify as servants of the Most High God, ready to do what it is that you've called us to do every day. We wake up, just do what you've asked us to do, and leave in our calling in Jesus' name. Amen.